Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Shape. For today on the podcast, we have the incredible opportunity of being joined with Olga Migorska. So Olga is the founder and CEO of Toloka AI, which is a company at the forefront of driving AI development through human expertise. With a background that includes a crucial role in data production at Yandex, she is an authority in fields like natural language processing, computer vision, but not just a business leader, Olga is also an academic contributor. She's co-authoring research papers and speaking at renowned conferences like Neural IPS and ICML. Her work has also been featured in Forbes, VentureBeat, and a lot of other publications. So thank you so much and welcome to the show today, Olga. Hello, hello, nice to meet you. Super happy to have you on the show. The first thing I want to talk to you a little bit about and ask you is if you could give everyone a little, like a brief description essentially of what Toloka does and kind of what motivated you to start this company to begin with. Yeah, sure. So in general, uh, we always say that AI and the modern technologies related to artificial intelligence stay on three key pillars. These are the models, the algorithms, the hardware, and the data. And overall, our company is focusing on fixing uh, everything related to the data for AI. This uh, relates to collecting training data to train AI models, um, collecting human insights in order to evaluate the quality of models and monitoring the, uh, moderating the outcomes of the models to make sure that they uh, work uh, in correspondence with uh, ethical uh, and compliance requirements of particular application. Okay. And... I mean, take me back to like when you got this company started. What was your what was your inspiration? Were you working somewhere, seeing this big need? What what kind of got you started? You know, creating this company. Yeah, actually, uh, if we look uh, maybe ten years ago, uh, that has always been a great irony of artificial intelligence. Even though it is called artificial intelligence, it is quite often uh, missed misviewed uh, that the large part of AI production is actually relies on human insights. Uh, because, for example, in order to train a self-driving car to drive across the streets, you need to feed uh, the model behind the self-driving uh, with literally millions of images on every image, every car, every pedestrian, every tree, every object is labeled and signed carefully by human. Or if you train the search algorithm, you would need literally hundreds of thousands of pairs of users' queries and uh, the judgments of the, whether the found document was relevant or not in order to train the ranking algorithm to uh, rank uh, more re most relevant documents higher than least relevant. Uh, or if you are talking with a chatbot, uh, how to evaluate whether the answers of the chatbot are relevant, spelled in the correct way, uh, formulated in a human way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All these things actually require human effort, and that was the problem uh, back like ten years ago, even five years ago, even a couple of years ago. That yeah. was one of the biggest bottlenecks in AI production is the part related to human labeling. Because everything else is automated and hence easily scalable, but human operational part scales much harder. You need specific skills and specific techniques, specific methodologies uh, in order to manage human efforts in a scalable way. And that is what we started with in Taloka, because for the long time we have been solving the problem of how to scale up human operations, uh, human labeling uh, to make it scalable uh, on a really large amount of data. Uh, and thus, we ended up uh, opening the crowdsourcing platform where, on the one hand, every person can register as a performer. We call our performers telokers. And on the other hand, uh, every business or every manager, every AI scientist can register as a requester. And the requesters posted their tasks uh, for labeling on the platform uh, telokers uh, chose the tasks they're interested in and performed them. And in between, uh, we invested a lot into quality control and actually creating automated pipelines out of minor efforts of different people that would come up with a reliable outcome of the data sets. 
that was which uh, the thing with which Taloka started. Okay. Uh, so we kind of invented uh, the the way how to uh, use the efforts of millions of independent performers, millions of independent people, uh, in order to result into high quality and large scale training data set for AI. That's that's amazing. Very cool. I'm I'm curious. But, you know, talking about using all these people and, and working on that, what kind of led you to emphasize the role of human insight in the development of AI and machine learning technologies? Is it something you, you focus on? So what, what led to that? Uh, so in general, there are two parts. One uh, is purely, I would say, mechanical. So in order to create um, the AI solution, uh, one needed huge amounts of human labeled data. By the way, this is the trend that is changing right now. With the development of large language models, we see that really substantial part of what you previously could have been done only with human efforts right now can be effectively done using large language models, and we use it in our production as well. Uh, so this part is right now being automized much more, and Taloka is now developing into the stage where we are actually pioneering in effective usage of large language models for uh, labeling data. But there is a second aspect, uh, which I think will not go anywhere, and this is more uh, of the ethical uh, aspect of human judgment, uh, which becomes more and more important these days, because we see right now with the uh, rays of generative AI with large language models with such applications as ChatGPT, uh, with the rise of usage of API, why API you can use ChatGPT in many, many different applications and services. Uh, so that part of AI solutions generation becomes much more democratized. But then there is the last mile which stays and in a way becomes much more important. Yeah. how to verify that actually these AI solutions uh, work correctly, that they are unbiased, that they perform uh, in the way you want them to perform. And what we observe right now uh, from looking at the industry, and that's, I think, very interesting thing. Previously, uh, very few companies really cared about the quality of their AI solutions. If we are working with multiple different companies across the globe, uh, and I would say only the top, most mature technological companies uh, really cared about measuring the quality of their AI solutions. Uh, but all the others took it like, okay, it works somehow and that's fine. Right now, uh, we see that this uh, approach is changing. Right now, much more the industry starts to take uh, responsible AI seriously. The yeah. industry starts to care about the quality much more because in a way right now, the models became such frighteningly uh, convincing. They can right. tell you something uh, and you want to believe them. So what the, the next thing I'm really curious about is how do you ensure the quality of data labeling um, when you're using these large language models? This is really important. Um, you know, we know that garbage in, garbage out, the quality of the content that you're putting in is really what makes a huge impact on getting something really quality out. So how do you really ensure that those are high quality? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. And uh, well, on the one, on the one hand, uh, there are lots of techniques and actually the majority of Taloka know-how and patents that we have in our product are related to quality control. Uh, and in a way, it's very interesting because some of the methods, well, Overall, it's a pure mathematics. When you operate on the scale of uh, large amounts of people who are making large amounts of effort in order to collect the uh, ultimate data set, you can apply a lot of statistical methods in order to uh, predict the reliability and the expected accuracy of a given person at the level of his or her expertise. Um, you can mathematically count how many votes from which experts you need to aggregate in order to achieve the desired level of quality of the final label. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it's quite interesting that the first approaches to such mathematical uh, approach towards data labeling were done back in 1979. Uh, there is a model of uh, David and Skin that was invented in 1979. It's like oh, 50 wow. years ago. Uh, to, in order to uh, aggregate the votes and the judgments of different doctors in medical sphere when they oh, needed okay. to come to a conclusion about the stage of certain patient. Uh, but then this model uh, received the second birth uh, in AI era, and that's quite, a, uh, quite an interesting fact. Uh, so on the one hand, uh, there, are, there is a lot of mathematics inside which you can apply in order to achieve high quality of uh, the results. On the second hand, uh, and this is what we are observing more and more right now, like the development of AI in general means that uh, algorithms can do more and more work than previ that previously was done by human. And this is also valid for data labeling as well. Uh, and that means uh, that humans and human judgments are needed uh, in less amount of cases, but these cases require much higher level of expertise. That's why what where the whole industry is driving right now and where Taloka as a, as a product is driving right now is towards expert labeling which on the one hand combines uh, all the previous techniques of quality control that we inherit from uh, our previous uh, stage of development of the product. But on the other hand, it also requires working with specific dedicated experts. And this, the speed with which uh, this trend is developing is actually amazing. Like yeah. half a year ago, we could not expect that right now we would be labeling data sets with the skills of senior software developers. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now, software developers are doing the job of data annotation in order to train AI algorithms for copilots projects uh, of different programming operators. Uh, and that's the fascinating progress that, that, that is happening right now. And the last part of it is actually and that's quite interesting to observe. I mentioned uh, previously that uh, overall industry is right now developing towards the understanding that quality of AI solution is something that matters. Uh -huh. uh, and at the same time, it's the, the question of cultural DNA of a company, whether you care, whether you know and have this uh, instinct to care about quality or not. Uh, uh -huh. And in Teloka, we definitely do have uh, this in the DNA because we are trained to measure the quality of data annotation, of data sets, of AI solutions from the start. And right now we apply the same methods and techniques uh, in order to evaluate the quality of not only the data that labeled to train the models, but also to measure the outcoming quality of overall AI solution. Very interesting. This is obviously like a really useful uh, piece of technology. This is an incredible company um, here. One question that I am curious about, and I'm sure a lot of people have is, you know, when you're building and scaling this, what is like, what has been one of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome? And how did you manage that? Like building this incredible company, it's so complex. There's so many technical aspects. I'm sure there's been some, a lot of difficult problems you've, you've uh, overcome, but what are, talk to me about some of the, the biggest ones. Well, uh, probably every year you would ask me this question and every year I would answer different <laughs> answers uh, because we're facing, we're surviving from one challenge to another as probably right. any company and any startup. Uh, I would say the last uh, year, maybe a little bit less than was one year, of course, it is all about the new technological development and the raise of generative AI and large language models, because on the one hand, uh, it gives us, it requires from us a certain uh, technological transformation. Just because I mentioned, uh, the more AI develops, the more job can be done by AI instead of humans and we know it better than anyone else. And we are here running to be ahead of uh, the curve in order to uh, update our product uh, in, in accordance to this technological development. At the same time, it is super interesting to observe because we are 
kind of in the eye of the storm right now. Everything that is going on in generative AI industry is passing by us because everybody who is developing certain solution needs uh, data to uh, training uh, their algorithms, to fine tuning the generic models to their particular use case, to do uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback, the RLHF stage, to uh, they they need also to monitor the quality to evaluate the med- metrics of the quality etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's all passing in front of us uh, and it's very interesting to observe uh, the new trends the new markets that are expected to raise with the raise of uh, this new technological era uh, so right now the biggest challenge is just to be adaptive as the time requires it yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of firms can uh, relate with you on that. A lot of people are, you know, seeing all this new technology. I mean, you've already been in it for a while, but a lot of people are just seeing all these rapid advancements and and trying to make sure they're staying on top of it and staying relevant and adapting to um, everything that's going on. Something that I would love to ask you about is, would you be able to talk uh, a little bit about, um, you know, your own personal journey? What led you to work in technology? What led you to work in AI? Like, how did you how did you come to a place where you're running this thing right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, my journey actually. Uh, let me let me recall how it how it started. Uh, overall, I studied mathematics uh, in the university, uh, and then I've been working uh, as an analyst, building uh, statistical models, predicting uh, different behaviors of, uh, I actually worked in an investment bank, uh, building some models of uh, whatever, probability of default, something like that. Back then it was called statistics, then it started to be called machine learning, and now it's called AI and etc. So uh, in a way, just uh, as you mentioned before, on the one hand, everything is changing so fast. On the other hand, uh, everything stays on the fundamentals that actually do not change that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I started there, but then at some moment I ended up uh, in in machine learning. Actually, with, with the need to fix uh, this problem of lack of training data that was produced by humans. Uh, and then I started the journey to actually solve this problem of scalability, of uh, finding enough data to train and validate the machine learning models. And apparently this uh, task is the task that I am solving throughout all my professional life since <laughs> then. Uh, tactics change because uh, different technologies raise and fall, uh, but overall the the general problem uh, on the market stays the same because technology it, technology is developing, but you need to provide tools and infrastructure to support this development. Very cool. Um, so that brings us to today. You've told us a little bit about what you guys are building. What I would be really curious about is, um, you know, what are some upcoming features or services that you're excited to roll out in the near future for Toloka? Yeah, we are actually very excited uh, to be rolling out our new platform, uh, which would allow businesses and uh, engineers uh, to actually uh, deploy their models uh, and then fine-tune them with the help of uh, the data labeling techniques that we have in order to apply them to their certain uh, applications. So how we foresee uh, the area of our future development, uh, like overall, we foresee the world as the world where there are several really large foundational models uh, that lie in the foundation of large variety of different uh, Gen AI applications. But then in order to uh, apply the generic technology to the particular use case, you would need some additional efforts to fine tune the generic model to apply it to your particular use case, and then to measure uh, the quality of the solution and constantly monitor that it works in accordance to your quality requirements and et cetera, et cetera. So we are uh, we want to make sure that Taloka is a place where you can 
uh, support all this life cycle of uh, the Gen AI solutions uh, with the help of all the layers of our infrastructure that we have. That's incredible. That's going to be very exciting. I'm sure a lot of people are excited for that. Uh, I'm sure you're excited to have that launched, and I'm sure that's a huge project. One question that I'm sure a lot of people are, are asking or thinking right now, or that I would like to ask you is, based off of everything you've learned in your career and, and working in your space, what's one piece of advice that you feel like you could give to um, you know people or companies that are looking at implementing AI um, to do different use cases within their company? What are some areas they should focus on? What's what's a piece of advice that you you could give them? Well, uh, it's probably would not be the piece of like business advice, but rather uh, my wish towards the, the industry uh, is to really care about the quality of what you are developing, uh, because AI is democratizing, so it becomes easier and easier and easier to come up with some idea and to launch it, launch it into production. So yeah, uh, the, the biggest thing that I would hope to see in the development of the industry is uh, being responsible about caring of what you actually deploy uh, to the world. That is some amazing advice and really an incredible thing to wish for the entire industry. I think building things we're proud of is something that really needs to be focused on in AI. So I really do appreciate that. If people want to get in contact with you or if people want to find out more about what you guys are building, where can they find that? Uh, Yeah, taloka.ai is our website. uh, And there you can find all the needed information about us. All right. Well, I will leave a link to your website in the show notes, but thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. For the listeners, thanks so much for tuning in to the AI Chat Podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts if you want more phenomenal guests like this and have an amazing rest of your day.